Well, that was pretty awesome, wasn't it? Yes. I loved every every minute that we spent camping there with the horses and up, 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 up. you just said with the horses. That's yes. That's the key. It's always horses with <laughs> Lindsay. Remember that. It's always horses. And bonus, I also got to go riding three times. Yep. So. I did not expect that at all. One was amazing and I, I, yeah, I did not expect to get to go riding. I thought we were just going to come camp here, meet her, volunteer with the kids. And she put me on three different horses three different times. Yeah. <laughs> and one was even a moonlight ride under the full moon. Which is a pretty unique yeah, experience. Yeah, I've never done that before, so it was really cool. The ranch that we're talking about is just outside to the north of San Felipe. And uh, we put an eye overlander pen there. Lens opened up. She enjoyed the time with us as well. So she's like, I think I want to do this more often, invite campers out. So if you're passing through San Felipe on your way south or north or wherever in Baja, definitely want to check in here with Lynn. All the information's on iOverlander. Um, we'll put something in the description as well. Um, but definitely get in touch with her. She's here all the time. If you happen to camp on a Tuesday, or if you can make it so that you can camp on a Tuesday, so over Monday night, Tuesday morning, every Tuesday morning from 9 to 11, 11.30ish, she has the kids come out for the therapeutic riding and you can be a part of that. So it's a pretty awesome, I mean, absolutely amazing experience. Transformational. My my heart was melted and all of that. I mean, it was, it was just awesome. So when you camp here, you're boondocking. Lynn will offer you water if you want to pay a couple extra dollars toward the donation. All funds, all camping funds, go to support the therapeutic riding program. So not only do you get a really cool place to camp and a really awesome experience, but you're also helping out the program directly impacting the kids. Most of the horses that are here at the ranch are rescues. Lynn has rescued quite a few horses and she retrains them, uses them in trail rides and also uses them in the therapeutic riding program. It's really great to know that um, your money spent here to camp is going to go towards the care of these horses and also the program and the fact that the horses are rescues and then in turn those rescued horses are helping kids with disability and disabilities it's really awesome. that's amazing yeah. yeah i mean it really is so if you're not able to get out here and you just want to donate we'll put the link in the description as well for how you can connect with lynn to donate and support either sponsoring a kid or sponsoring a horse um, however you feel called, if you feel called to support the ranch here. But if you can come out here and stay, this place is awesome. The sunset's absolutely spectacular. Yeah. We're here for full moon, so watching the full moon rise, amazing. But the colors, I mean, literally 360 degrees around when the sun is setting. You've got the sea to one side, and then the sun mm -hmm. actually sets over the mountains. Mm -hmm. And man, the, the colors. Unfortunately, we have some housekeeping that we've got to do, and we know manana manana means someday we do have to move on. So today is manana for us. We are moving on. We're not going far. We're just going to go closer into town so we can go check out San Felipe. So right now we're about 15 miles outside of town. We've got to stop and get propane, and we also, you may have noticed, have squeaky brakes. So we want to go and try to find a brake shop. Mm -hmm. and see what we can do about just getting them looked at and if any work has to be done then we'll get it done that's what we got lined up and we're going to drive through town we'll take you with us and we will be parking hopefully just outside of town not too far um, but there's an rv camp there that we're hoping to get some space at where we can work and we can play and we can wander into town yeah sounds great ready to go we are just about to head into town of San Felipe, and this is how you know when you are about to, I guess, enter the city limits. It's the famous arches. We just went over famous tope. Gateway to the Sea of Cortez. Coming up next, brake check. No, nope. you're nope. always off. Coming up next, propane. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully they can fill us up. 
there is a kind fellow who's going to fill up our tanks for us. So Yay. hopefully we get a fair price, because I've read that this place is hit or miss on that. So we'll see how it works out. I'm going to go take the tanks out and be back in a minute. All right, so I got to take the tanks out and we have removable tanks, which is a huge advantage for many reasons. One, we can take them out. Two, we can take them out. And three, we can take them out. So Lindsay reminded me the real advantage is we can take them out instead of having to back into a place and have a big long hose and some places can and can't fill you up um, like you may see in some vans or class A motorhomes. So for us, your system may look different, but we have two tanks and that's part of us getting this camper. We wanted to have the extra propane. So like last night, we actually ran out of this tank, which is great. We have a nozzle that switches over. So if we want to run on this tank, we just move it over there. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to make sure both tanks are closed. We have this really cool locking device here. So unscrew that. And this comes off. And this will normally hold the tanks in place when we're bumping around like we just did. And then of course, closed. Hoses off, and then the fun part is got to lift this up. That one still has some propane in it, but since we're here, we want to go ahead and top off both of them. If we're only using our refrigerator, our propane will last for weeks. We could probably go a month and a half the refrigerator. With us using our stove inside and our Blackstone grill that we have for outside, it uses a bit of propane, so it's better just to go ahead and top off. And looking on iOverlander, not sure where we're going to see propane again as we start to head south. So since we're here, we're just going to go ahead and top off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How about I got a story for you? So we read that um, propane prices vary depending upon um, who, like everything in Mexico, depends on who you are and who you're talking to and what you know and how gringo you are. So I read this Eye Overland review of this place. Uh, Lynn sent us here, it's a place where all gringos come. And I walked up and I see the price there, which said 11.45 pesos per liter. Okay, great. So it's already pretty expensive because that's about 75 cents a liter times 3.8, and that's pretty expensive propane. I was like, all right, this one's gonna cost us. So he starts filling up the one that was empty, and I watched the meter, it zeroed out, and I watched the meter, and it went up to 14. And then he put the other one on, which wasn't completely empty, it was actually mostly full, and that goes up three separately. So I had to remember seeing the 14, and then seeing the three, because then he offers to help me, and brings the tank around, when he gets here, which was great. I love I love that they love to help people out. So he gets here and we get all the, the tanks loaded up and then he hands me a number and it says 450 pesos. Mm. Now, I didn't do the math in my head, but 450 pesos is a lot of money to pay for one tank and a tiny bit and a second tank. So I said, no, 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 no. Let's do the math. And that's when he didn't realize that I hablo espanol mm. piquito and I said, 14 liters in uno, 14 liters in one, y tres liters in el otro, three in the other, is 17 liters. And then I showed him the price, and he punched it in, and you know what it turned out to be? I'm going to give you a minute to do the math. Less than half of that. It was 194 pesos. So he tried to charge me 450 pesos for what should have cost 194. So, not a bad taste in my mouth because we knew this is what, what people do here. Mm. Not everybody, but it just uh, definitely goes to show when you're filling up gas, when you're filling up propane, even when you're filling up water, make sure to watch the meter, make sure to understand the numbers and the price. And this place did have a published price per liter, so I knew what I was getting into. And as soon as I said that, he didn't argue with me. He didn't fight. He knew I knew what was up, and he just gave me the change that I you know, expected, and everything was good. So, yeah. Ooh, that was a close one. Welcome to Mexico, yeah. 
So already it was 200, so it was about $12 for propane, which is a little bit high. Usually you pay that much for two full containers. Um, but paying $25 would have been astronomical. Yeah. So if you are in um, if you are in San Felipe or you come through San Felipe, we told you we love this place so far, but definitely in all of Baja, be aware of how you're getting charged for things. They should all have meters, they should all start at zero, and you should know the price per quantity, whether it's per liter of gas, per liter of diesel, per liter of propane, uh, or even water. So, out of here, we're gonna go find the brake shop and hope they don't try to screw us too. <laughs> After that fun little adventure, it's time to go check out the brakes. We found the place, and um, they supposedly work with a fair number of gringos, so hopefully somebody speaks Spanish. I mean, yeah, hopefully somebody speaks English, because my Spanish when it comes to auto parts is not all that great. I do know that brakes are los freños, so I'm gonna go in and see how I can get our los freños cleaned, fixed, whatever. I was thinking limpy R in Spanish is clean, so. I need to get los frenos uh, fixed though, <laughs> which is fixed. <laughs> my friend, my friend habla ingles poquito, and I speak a little Spanish, so we met in the middle in uh, 10 minutes, and they're gonna look at our brakes. Okay. Look at our brakes first, and then yeah. maybe fix them if I need to be fixed. So we haven't had brake work since we were in Canada. Shout out to the Tube family. If you're still following along, we love you guys. We've not forgotten you. Um, so here we go. With all we put into the truck, we're hoping there's nothing, uh, nothing major, nothing expensive. Um, but we haven't really looked at the brakes in a while. So um, could be something. There's always something with a, a vehicle and that's, it's <laughs> really some but uh, it's part of owning a vehicle, and especially one that you live out of. It's our home, so if you have a home on wheels, then you need to maintain it just like you would maintain a home without wheels. And that's kind of what we're up against now. So hopefully it'll be a short little fix and inexpensive, and we'll be back on the road in just a couple minutes. Just found out our brakes are good 80%. In the rear. 80% left in the rear, 50% left in the front, so we're good to go. Yeah, worry free now. Yeah, we just wanted to have them checked, looked at, and just make sure we were good for the rest of the trip and should do so. So, when somebody points out the squeaking and squealing in the videos, it's, we'll say it's an old truck. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind words. Um, Sometimes people give our us some rotors great. probably need to be turned, but it's not. Bad. I, I felt the rear ones and they they weren't that bumpy, so that's just something we could do when we're back in the States. Mechanic of the family. <laughs> so. We're good. We're good. Our plan from here is we are going to pull out and go to the grocery store one last time, stock up on some apple juice. Yeah, we found some good apple yeah, juice we did. here. <laughs> so we're going to load up on we some were... apple juice. <laughs> and then we're gonna go find our new campsite for the next couple days. Hunker down and get some work done. So you can watch this video, because if we don't stop moving, you're never gonna see this. One of the truths of life on the road, one of the truths of documenting life on the road. We're living it, but if we don't get it to you, then it doesn't matter to you. So we're gonna get it to you. Oh yeah, we gotta get our data plan fixed. <laughs> So we were back, oh and my goodness. back and forth with Verizon while we were waiting to get our brakes checked. And we're supposed to have a new plan now that gives us data unlimited in Mexico. And so far that's not the case no. either. So we are having all sorts of fun uh, learning to live in Baja. Learning to live, is that, that's not a right English expression. We're learning to live in Baja and we're having lots of lessons. So we're learning so we can help you not go through what we're going through, hopefully. This is really our first uh, roadside taco stand, so we're excited. It's carnitas, pork, which we don't always eat. Actually, we don't eat that hardly at all. We're not opposed to it, especially when we tango hombre, which is, <laughs> I have hunger. How do you say it? <laughs> 
Tengo hombre. Tengo hombre, you have a man? <laughs> she is correct. She has a man. That's me. Do you have hunger? Tengo hombre. Hombre. You have hunger. It's pretty awesome. I told, told the gentleman that I was hungry and he said, nobody leaves here hungry. So that's very good to know. I put the red sauce on. It's not supposed to be too hot. Yeah. But I am. Um, I licked a little off my fingers and then it was a little hot, which is great. <laughs> I like hot so I cry. Open up the nostrils. Mm. Muy bueno. Delicioso. Awesome. Mm. Just when we think we've got traveling in Mexico figured out, because we learned, well, we got money out of an ATM, mm -hmm. that's good. It's expensive, but we got it. We've gotten diesel. We got gas, and we know to check the monitors, the yep. whatever, the spinny thing. And, and we've gotten we got propane. Propane, same thing. We saved ourselves from getting screwed with propane. We've gone grocery shopping. We've negotiated camping rates. We have made friends and volunteered, mm -hmm. and we've spoken enough Spanish to get by. And just when we think we're good, Verizon screws us over. Screws us over. And this is a shout out if you work for Verizon. Um, we're really pissed at your company right now. And we don't usually do negative stuff, but we're going to tell you why Verizon absolutely. So let's it. just cut to the chase and let's show them what the view looks like right now. For eleven dollars a night. For eleven dollars a night. Why are we even thinking yes. about Netflix? Yeah, as ever slicks her foot. <laughs> Why would anybody think about Netflix when this is what you have? The reason why I would think about Netflix is it is only four o'clock and the sun's about to set in the next thirty minutes. On that note, we're gonna go take a stroll through the Malacan, which is the boardwalk along the water. We're gonna take the dog with us, even though she got into our trash while we were out on this last <laughs> errand. We can't punish her now if you don't know how dogs work. Like, they don't have a concept of time. So, too much time passed. We didn't punish her when we should have, which would have been raising our voices and saying, well, we're really mad at you, but you look so darn sweet and cute that we really can't be mad at you. So yes, our dog is a princess and she gets away with everything. But we're gonna take her for a little walk down to the Malacan and we'll take some video while we're down there because it's beautiful it's for- It's a neat place. Yeah, I mean, the views are beautiful. This, mm -hmm. this sunset right here is pretty awesome. It's an old fishing town. San Felipe is an old fishing town and it still has that feel. There's a lot of tourism built up on the Malacan in, mm -hmm. in that area. A lot of gringo dollars were spent down here. But that's okay. That's how it goes in beautiful places. And uh, anyway, let's stop talking. Let's go check it out. Yeah. So this is the Malacan in San Felipe. This is the same sunset that we've been looking at for the last couple days from the desert. Except here, there's no obstruction to the horizon. Except for Lindsay's head. 